Also to um, our video, um, I'm sorry, and it's Future Focus Media. Future Focus Media um, for doing the video for us today. Um, thank you to all of our legislators who are able to be here today. You have all been fantastically responsive and uh, accessible, and we really, really appreciate that you are listening. Um, and we know that it shows, um, so thank you. So, one night after a very long day of trying to save the world, I tried to explain to my husband the challenges of the work that we here call systems change. The big ideas and the excitement followed by the excruciatingly slow process of getting the right people involved, getting the timing right, getting the funding that you need, the data that's required, the false starts, the dead ends, the tiny incremental gains, and trying to keep a large number of people who are pulled in a thousand different directions, engaged and motivated. Finally, after kind of going through all of this, I said, you know what it feels like? It feels like making crop circles. When you fly over the field, you have this amazing image of what it's going to look like. And you can see where everything goes. And then you get down on the ground and you strap a couple of boards to your feet and all you see is corn. <laughs> And then I repeated this observation to a couple of colleagues and they agreed, but they added that you really need both. You need the plane overhead and constant communication with the people on the field to direct the work, to make sure that it's contributing to that big picture. And the people on the ground need to hear that they're making a difference, that that work is progressing, and even though that they can't see it, the picture is taking shape. In 2016, the North Central Community Health Improvement Plan made its debut, one year ago. The vision of over 100 people representing every sector and community in North Central came together to create the document that you are holding in your hands, a blueprint for a healthier community. It's a beautiful image, a place where everyone wants to live, work, learn, and play. For the last year, most of us have been down on the ground though. Working groups, working groups aptly named, got down to the business of choosing their first year tasks. Most of the time the tasks weren't all that exciting. Surveys to assess needs, attitudes, and barriers that shape the current health conditions in our community. Research on current programs, best practices, resources. Recruiting new members to fill the knowledge gaps or bring new resources to the group. All while the calendar pages turned, and even the most patient among us began to squirm. We need to do something. We've been stamping through this field all year, and all I see is more corn. That's what makes this chip document so important. Whenever we're feeling lost in the corn, we can go back to it and take stock. Are we really lost? Are we really not making progress? Or is it just too big and too far off to see down on the ground? So today is about flying over the field, surveying the landscape for the progress of our shared vision, and really taking the time to appreciate and celebrate the work of the individuals, the organizations, and the working groups, all the players who are working to complete the picture and fulfill our shared mission. It is truly an honor and a privilege to be on this journey with each and every one of you. I, I'm just, I'm in awe of the boundless energy that you all possess. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for letting me be a part of this, and thank you for all of your work. I'm going to transition now to the working groups who are going to introduce the progress that they have made this past year and their plans for the future. 
but I just want to start with a preface of the things that we have all learned in the working groups, um, because some things are very common among each working group. We learned that recruitment and leadership development for a multi-year plan is an ongoing task. Most of the groups have experienced some leadership transition, and that's not a bad thing. Individuals rotate in and out of the working groups as the demands of their personal and professional lives change. And although it's comfortable to allow a few strong leaders to take on the lion's share of the work, it's also dangerous. So the rotation of leadership is actually a good thing. It keeps everybody involved, it keeps everybody knowing that their work is important. They are not just a member of a group. We also learned that to make, uh, that we need to make sure that we're doing a good job of orienting our new members, making sure that all new members who are coming in um, don't feel like they are uh, coming late to the table um, and they all feel like they are up to date on what's going on and that they have something to contribute. We learned that to run a successful working group, we need regular meeting times, places, regular communications and minutes, action items. In short, we learned how to be working groups. We learned to build trust and that there are no shortcuts to building that collaboration between organizations that are used to doing their own thing or that are used to being accountable to other entities besides these working groups. We learned that just because each of these working groups has a commitment to eliminating health disparities doesn't mean that the issues of racial justice are being adequately addressed. Thus, we've added a new priority area specifically for racial justice. We'll hear about that later in the program. We learned that each of the priority areas need two very similar things, information about the community's needs, desires, and perceptions, and information about existing services, resources, and other assets in the community. All of the working groups have projects related to both of these right now. We also learned that you can only do so much for free. Each of the working groups has been fantastic about looking to their own organizations for project support and resources. Several have been very active this year in pursuing grant funding, but it's hard to think big when you have a starting budget of zero. So this year, I am very pleased to announce that Chana 9 has set aside $25,000 as a seed fund for the CHIP. The working groups will have access to this fund to facilitate the work that they've already begun, conducting surveys, asset mapping, community education, advocacy and policy work, and researching and promoting evidence-based best practices. I'm now going to let each of the working groups take over. Healthy eating and active living. You go back to active eating after you give your presentation. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. My name is Rosa Fernandez. I manage um, community benefits at Health UMass Memorial Health Alliance Clinton Hospital. And I was um, leading the the healthy eating and the active living group for um, at the beginning stages we were together and, and we split up to two different um, sectors just to um, address the two different areas. And the teams, what we did was we developed the North Central Community Food Assessment o overview outlining overall goals and objectives of the community food assessment working with the Metro Area Planning Commission outlined a work plan. We designed a community food assessment access survey, both in English and in Spanish, developed, by, developed a stakeholders list with assistance from MOC for deployment of the survey and it has begun dissimilating the survey. And as you can see when you were coming in, the surveys are out there. So if you have a few minutes, please, we, we encourage you all to fill out that survey. We want to get an um, idea of the whole um, catchment area. We also designed and tested a food market survey to assess availability of fresh fruits and vegetables in the region retail food markets. 
The, Bigel <clears throat> the Bigelow Public Library in Clinton used the CHIP to receive a Library and Service Technology Act grant from the Institute of Museum and Library Services to offer health programs like low um, genetic cooking, um, cooking matters, and sponsor outreach presentation locally. Um, Fitchburg State University, which is there in the room, I, I, I really want to applaud them for their efforts. Um, they, they, they partnered with us um, to um, with the Active Living Group, and they implemented a grant-funded research project on recreational spaces physical activity, health and attitudes, perceptions on healthy lifestyles in Fitchburg. While limited in geographic scope, the project can be replicated with changes discovered in small and scale project and other Chana communities. <laughs> this is the rest of the group. I wanna make sure that we acknowledge them. Good morning, I'm Debbie Bennis. Um, from Fitchburg State University. I've actually been working on a few of these, um, the active living and the healthy eating. Um, but my focus today is to speak to you about the Food Access Survey. Um, this is going to be a, a, a large-scale North Central Mass survey so that we can better understand and map the region um, related to food access, food insecurities, and the quality of the food that we have in our region. Um, my lovely assistant, Camilla Perla de Leon, um, will be walking around passing surveys out to the tables. If you could please fill the surveys out today, that would be wonderful. We have them in both Spanish and English. Um, the other thing is we really need your help. Um, we need you as our stakeholders to be going out into the community and getting these surveys completed. Um, we're here to help get that completed. We just need people on the ground. Um, please email me and we can work on assisting in getting surveys completed. Our goal is to have a minimum of 2,000 surveys done for this region. So it is a very large, overwhelming task. Um, and I have two students to help me with that task. So I really need that, um, the community stakeholders. Um, so thank you. Uh, my name is Erica Wood. I'm um, the engagement manager at Growing Places. Um, I'm just going to talk briefly about our next steps with the Healthy Eating Working Group. Um, many of you may know the Massachusetts Food Trust Program has recently received uh, funding. And this program supports um, financing structures for re uh, retail food operations. Um, MDAR, our Massachusetts Food Trust Program through MDAR, is currently um, accepting proposals for projects around um, food retail ventures. And we are currently brainstorming what kind of um, programs or projects that might look like that we could help facilitate in the region. Our group identified Winchenden as a potential area um, to work in. Uh, Winchenden actually currently has no grocery store um, nowhere to access fresh food, and they're um, busing people to New Hampshire right now, actually, to get groceries. So, um, Winchenden is definitely an area of high priority, and our plan is to um, start implementing focus groups and working with the municipality to identify really um, what demand there is, what, um, what people want, potential areas where we could set up something to create an opportunity for people to access fresh and healthy and affordable food. Uh, we have also identified a potential project in Fitchburg. Um, New View Communities has acquired a building um, that we um, might be able to access to um, facilitate some kind of um, food service sales operation. So whether that's a pop-up farmer's market um, or something of the like we are still looking into. Um, but the, that's really our plan uh, going forward beyond um, analyzing the food access survey and figuring out further need and demand from that and um, creating new strategies. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Tricia Pistoni. I'm the Vice President of Montachusetts Opportunity Council, uh, but also serve as Project Director of the Fun and Fit Initiative in Fitchburg. 
um, not to uh, duplicate what has already been said, but just reinforce the fact that the work that we're doing on the food um, access survey really speaks to our overall goal, which was commented earlier, that we're trying to create a regional food assessment to increase access to healthy foods in the region. The use of data is incredibly important. We've already used some um, baseline census data to be able to really identify some of the core um, priority communities while we're looking to do this throughout the Chena um, service area. We're certainly looking to prioritize Fitchburg, Lominster, Gardner, Clinton, Athol, and Winchenin. Um, again, based on priority, um, based on data that has identified those as priority communities. Um, just in, again, looking at the sort of the big picture and, and about trying to get people involved in this, we understand that um, while food access may not be a core um, component of the work that your organizations do, that uh, it is important for all the clients and all the residents in North Central to have healthy food access. Um, so involving yourself, whether it's by providing the surveys or getting involved in our group um, is, uh, is needed and appreciated. Um, I'd also say just in terms of next steps we're looking forward to next year is that we want to get through this food access um, or food assessment process um, quickly, you know, within the next six to, to um, eight months because we really need to move on to strategies. And in order for us to really be able to identify effective and efficient strategies to address regional food access, we need to have this information. So your help is, is definitely necessary. And I'd also say that um, because there are these uh, other priority areas, they all interrelate. So I think as we look into next year in terms of our role, it's also how to improve um, access and information and communication, specifically with transportation, with the Healthy Living Group, and uh, the Race, um, Health Equity, and Racial Justice Group. So again, thank you, and we look forward to your participation. Before I go on to the next group, um, that, so they presented on the healthier eating and, and the active living, UMass Memorial. Um, wellness coordinator did present to the Active Living Group on Workplace Wellness Initiative and um, UMass Medical School also have provided students to help with um, active um, living resources. They've re um, created a map of the area where all the um, active living areas are and they also um, helped us with um, spearheading walk with a dock. Um, so we're out in Fitchburg, Dr. Jill Terabasi is walking with the community. It's every second Wednesday of the month at 5.30, please. Um, and for next year, we're, our plans for next year, we're looking to expand the walk with the dock in the Clinton area. So looking forward, please join one of our groups and, and listen to the rest. Thank you. Deb Stone from Healthy and Safe Relationships. Hi, I'm Deborah Stone. I'm from Fitchburg State and I'm the chair of the Forensic uh, Graduate Nursing Programs. And I'm here to talk about the Healthy and Safe Relationships. So I'm going to use my notes because we've actually done quite a bit um, in our short period of time. So we have expanded and now consist of a variety of stakeholders. We have worked to secure funding for <laughs> curriculum development and begin research on evidence-based programs for the inclusion of a curriculum. We have also identified two pieces of legislation to be introduced and or supported through advocacy. The first is entering the DNA results of all sexual assault kits into CODIS and eliminating language that prevents gun ownership for perpetrators of domestic violence crimes only if the victim is a spouse, household member, or has a child with the perpetrator. So that's a really important two pieces of legislation we would like to um, see come to fruition. The Pathways for Change, Sex Trafficking Outreach Department supports survivors of the commercial sex industry and seeks to educate the community about commercial sex exploitation and the irreparable harm it causes, as well as educating <coughs> medical professionals, treatment professionals, law enforcement, and other social service agencies. The YWCA has expanded events in Gardner and Fitchburg 
for the weak without violence. Memberships of the Healthy and Safe Relationship Working Group conducted a hashtag safety is community engagement campaign at summer community resource fairs in connection with National Night Out, National Out, I'm sorry, Night Out for Safety and Liberation. The Healthy Relationships Group supports Safe Communities Act and it's important in making sure that immigrants, both documented and undocumented, are assured protection if they report domestic violence or child abuse. Thank you. Kelly. <laughs> Kelly Rooney with the Mental and Behavioral Health and Substance Abuse Group. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Kelly Rooney. I am the Director of Marketing and Communications at UMass Memorial Health Alliance Clinton Hospital. And first I'd like to start um, Mary Gianetti. I'd like her to stand up. She has been an integral part of this working group. Um, and we'll be I'm just the representative today. Um, and what I'd like to do is announce a couple other members of our team. We were working in tandem and we realized that, you know, this has taken on a, a life of its own and we needed to get more of a team together. Other than the working group, we needed more of a leadership team. So. Um, They've agreed that uh, Veronica Patty, who is part of GCAT and Luck, she's right over there, everyone. Um, Paul Richard from the Shine Initiative has agreed to, to help us out. And Michelle Dunn. Michelle Dunn from Gamma and the AED Foundation. So that's kind of our new leadership group. So, um, so one of the things that we had in our original plan uh, was to try to kind of cut down the wait times and wait lists in all of these facilities. We realized that that probably wasn't going to happen because it was, it was um, the variables were too high and it just, it wasn't a good indicator for us. So what we've done, and you can see it in your packet, is um, we've replaced the plan with a number of bridge <laughs> services available. So we're trying to gauge what services can be gone into before you get into that specific service. So that is one of them, and we want to measure the successful outcomes. Um, another one was we created a survey to gauge community awareness. So we're gonna be sending that to all the sectors. We've actually partnered with Fitchburg State University and um, Professor Corey Ryan, who is working with us for the IRB process to make sure that we can get that out to as many people as we can. And then, um, the working group has taken steps to create inventory of evidence-based trainings and best practices so we, uh, that we currently use in North Central Mass. Information is gathered to help community partners, so um, we're gathering all that. And I forgot to mention, I'm sorry, on the survey, that's more about access and what services are available. So questions are, you know, do you know where to access services? Where do you go? What's the next step? So we're gonna be, we're gonna be sending that out hopefully by mid-January. So those are just some of the things we're working on. Fitchburg State University, again, I just wanna give them um, a shout out because they've been wonderful. They're um, going to be participating more in, in some of this as we go forward. So that's kind of a brief summary on what we're working on. Now I'm gonna call up Virginia Leonard for the Transportation and Access Group. Um, good morning, everyone. I work over at Neshoba Valley Medical Center. I do business development. And transportation certainly is an important issue for us in the medical field and just within the communities in general because it really interrelates to all the different topics that we've been talking about. And um, I, so I want to echo a little bit about what Chelsea said in the beginning, that when we initially started our project, we had certain goals in mind, certain things we were looking at. And we've realized as we've gone along, at least I've recognized for myself, how much I don't understand about transportation and how much I still need to learn about transportation if we're going to be effective in achieving what our goal has been, which is to provide um, and identify appropriate access for everyone. Because we're dealing with so many different communities, some communities which have buses, some communities which don't even know what Uber is. Um, and so we're really looking at how we can develop this. So 
I'm going to go a little bit out of order in this, in the sense that there are two things we're actively working on right now, which we'll be working on going into 2018. And Chelsea's been really helpful in terms of being on our committee and working with us um, and accessing certain individuals who've been really key to getting things to move a lot faster. So one of the things we're doing with the assistance of Fish, uh, a gentleman from Fishburg State is to start to develop what I keep lovingly call a catalog, but it's not quite really what it is. It's more of a living program in which we're going to, um, with a lofty goal, um, identify what kind of transportation services actually exist. Because even if you go on any site, it's very random. And as I start, the more we start to learn, the more meetings I go to, I realize a lot of people are developing and trying to answer this question themselves. And if we try to catalog it and put it together, it's going to help people. But we need to have some intelligent people that can put together programs that allow it to be easy access. So that's something we're working on. Um, and we're really hoping that that can be done next year, maybe the year later. Again, needing seed money because I don't know if anyone, any of you have ever tried programming. It's not that simple. Um, I know there are intelligent ones that can do it. I'm not one of them. So we're really looking forward to this. The other thing that we've actually started to do, um, and this was some of the input we've gotten from talking to the chamber and other individuals, is you really need to get surveys going because we need to have the data. We need to, to actually demonstrate that what we think is the case is the case. So that means you actually have to go up to the stakeholders themselves, just like everyone has said, to get that information. And that's going to be looking at very specific groups that we have to, we're targeting. So from my perspective, it's the medical, but it's also students, et cetera. And so I want to have Sherry Bean stand up and talk a little bit about the um, survey process because she's been fantastic in developing the surveys that we're going to be using, and we're really excited about having her as part of our team. I wasn't really expecting to talk, so I kind of just found <laughs> some things down, so hopefully I can cover it all. So I work in the Alliance the Regional Planning Commission, and we had talked about doing a transportation study survey for a long time. And now that we are engaged with the, the CHIP process, it's a perfect time to start. And it's kind of a good way to have some funding behind uh, the transportation group. So through our Unified Planning Work Program, which is funded by the state, the Mass, Mass DOT, we, um, we decided to do a survey analysis of, um, we did four topic areas of, for the surveys. We did the workforce, medical, um, seniors and elderly, and disability. We kind of wrote those together. And then, uh, <coughs> what am I missing? Higher education, if I can say that word. Um, so we're trying to find the needs of the region, uh, how people are getting around, why they might not be using public transportation, if there's any other transportation elements that we are unaware of. We're just trying to get it all in one place. And then we can work towards um, putting together that programming Mm -hmm. um, with the Fitchburg State Health. Um, the surveys are currently in the works. We have the workforce and the education surveys final, and we're just trying to wrap up the medical and the seniors. So that should be kicking out in the net by the end of the year, I really hope, <laughs> if not January. And then we'll really work with the Pittsburgh State students to help get the, the outreach out there to get all the surveys in that we need. <coughs> and then we'll wrap it up by the end of the year uh, with some help from Pittsburgh State with the analysis. So Sumi from Pittsburgh State, who is a professor, has some students on board who's ready to do some uh, data analysis for us and really hone in on the areas of need. And then the next goal is for the next breakfast, we'll have uh, lots of data for you and much more ways to move forward. And just one thing I want to echo, um, because I know other people have said the same thing. Um, we certainly need your help and support in getting out and addressing our surveys. And one group I would really like to reach out to if you're here this morning, um, when, when we're looking at doing medical surveys, we actually are going to split it up into two different things. One actually is the providers and one are the patients because you have different points of views and different things we need to address. So if there are individuals here this morning that represent medical facilities that I could catch up with, I'd like to see if we can get a meeting at some point so I can give you the surveys and we can start working on that part and then we'll start looking at how we're going to get to the patients. And again, I think as everyone has echoed, if you know individuals who are interested in joining any of our committees, we're, we're really excited if you want to join us. The more we have, the better we can do. Thanks.
earlier that we have a new priority area that was developed this year. That area is racial justice, and here to present on that area is Barbara Nealon. She, oh, there she is. <laughs> <laughs> I felt I, I needed to give you a basic overview of what the racial justice plan um, was um, because a lot of people just think it's based on color. Um, so it's a framework of affirming equity, healing, hope, and opportunity, addressing issues of poverty, race, and racism, power, oppression, privilege, policies, and system changes. Our focus will be on women and girls indigenous and native people, racial and ethnic populations, immigrants of color, people living in poverty, LGBTQ, people with different abilities, people who practice different religions or none, racial and ethnic men and boys, and other government protected and historically marginalized populations. I'll tell you, for the morning, that's a lot, even for me to say. Um, <laughs> Our uh, group is working to accomplish the, um, the following. Leadership and civic engagement, which we're our, we, we have a long history through the Three Pyramids and the North Central Mass Minority Coalition of doing many of these um, objectives. Um, but now um, being included into the CHIP, it just really solidifies our efforts within the region. Um, health disparities, we've had a subgroup with um, health and human service providers for about eight years, and we continue to work and do um, address much of the issues associated with the social determinants in health and health disparities. Business and economic development, education, training, and employment, communications, expanding our Freedom Means program on WPKZ to address some of these issues, resource and development, it's human, technical, and financial. And we are currently um, raising consciousness, enforcing affirmative action plans, evidence and outcomes, um, advocacy policy and organizing, un unconscious bias, discrimination, and exploitation, structural racism, and philanthropy. And now we have a couple of our other members here, and I thought it was important that the um, I didn't want to be the only person speaking, and unfortunately, Adrian was sick today. And when he asked me to speak, I'm going, a oh, white girl, you know, we've got to, you know, we've got to show our color in our committee here. So I'm going to turn um, this over to Irene Hernandez, who is also the president of uh, Three Pyramids and the Minority Coalition. Thank you, Sparta. So I just want to welcome you all here and say thank you. Thank you for showing up for our community. I want to uh, share with you uh, just a couple of things about our community. This is what our community looks like. This right here. This right here. Affirm us. We see you, see us. Um, people say, oh, I don't see color. I said, well, your shoes and your belt and your purse match. <laughs> <laughs> I saw color right away when I looked at my white mother who's Puerto Rican but has blonde hair and blue eyes and white skin. I just want you to check in with yourself because it's a reminder that it's, it's not this color issue and all these isms, it's a heart issue. So in our community, we have the possibility with all of us sitting here today, local and state officials, nonprofits, to unite in a genuine, genuine people response to our community's needs. We don't have to fight, we don't have to argue, and we don't have to undermine. We need to come to the table continuously to have these conversations. The last thing I'm gonna leave you with is this. It's one of my favorite sayings. Actually, I got many of them. Um, one is that we here are responsible to be the voice of the voiceless. Why? Because we stand here in leadership. It is a responsibility and an obligation that we have to our community, everybody in our community. And the last one is this for the vision of North Central is this. He who can see the invisible can do the impossible. Yes. Um, thank you for having us here. Um, my name is Furkan Mahmoud. I'm part of the Three Pyramids. 
Um, 3 Primus has been associated with many organizations like the United Among the Massachusetts Incorporated, also the MDA Muslim Community of Fishburg. So during these times, everyone has been in, with, everybody has been in tune with the current events, and we have been in full support of any outreach in the communities involving all aspects that people of our community need. So we want to further the betterment of our brothers and sisters in the community. Thank you. Can anybody that identifies itself as indigenous come on up here? <laughs> Anyone from Puerto Rico or any of the Latin countries come on up here? Aquanique, Ki Tumpus, Kisa, Uhigi, Matt Wat Kayak, Ki Tumpaka, Quinianima, Machini, the Botne, the Way, Nis Nisim, Mashame, Kawi, Mui, Wonsikat, Aho. I have said, brothers and sisters, it's a beautiful day to dance around and above the red earth. All tribes are welcome at the Great Rock honoring our clans. I thank thee for our relations. These things I say are forever eternal. I am Chief Spring Buffalo, I hope. The reason why I asked all of them to come up is that we are all Indians. We don't identify ourselves as immigrants. And that word is something that we're trying to change in the community because we are indigenous to our countries. We are Indians. So Indians just don't look like me or Native Americans. Native Americans are federally, rec federally recognized tribes. American Indians are us. Indigenous are us. Aboriginals is myself. I am a direct descendant of Massasoit and King Phillips. I come from the royal line of the Poconocans. I was the first people here. The language that I spoke was the first language of this country. That's why I spoke it. So when we ask people to come into this country and speak American, it's Algonquin we should be asking them to speak. <laughs> or Massachusetts. So I just wanted to bring that to light. Thank you. I hope. I felt, thank you, um, I felt as if I'm missing from the community, you know. Uh, I feel so great to be up here again. Um, you know, the work that all of you are doing when I hear about the healthy living. You know, I am a farmer by blood, so I'd like to collaborate this coming year with you uh, with my two acres garden in Lancaster. And so please reach out. But uh, my name is Train Wu. I work um, for Mount Wachuse Community College as an adjunct professor, also an academic counselor but I teach at the high school. I brought two young people here today. We have a healthcare pipeline program, but I've been doing this work with Adrian for the last probably when I was 15 years old. And so, uh, so it's so nice to be here. Also, I have just been elected for 2018 as the United Mong of Massachusetts president. So please do reach out to us. All, all of the objectives, all the priority areas are something that our communities will be involved with you. We will have people in, in every part of those priorities. Please reach out to us, um, and also please, you know, join this this racial justice plan too as well. So again, I look forward to working with many of you, you know, in the next I would say four years. And so please reach out to us. Thank you. And we want to say thank you, and we want to call out and say. Later. <laughs> I am now going to turn the program over to John Snow Inc. and the Massachusetts Regional Planning Commission who are going to lead us through an exercise. So we've been sitting for a while and digesting and now we're going to get up and move. Um, and then we're going to get into some discussion groups. Um, 
and all of these ideas that you've heard um, and the progress that you've heard going through these priority areas. Um, if you have burning thoughts about um, what is missing, um, anything that's not being addressed, um, ways to further the work that is currently being done, um, this is going to be the time to really dig in and discuss. Turn this over now to Alec McKinney. Uh, thank you all. Um, I just first want to say my name is Alec McKinney. I'm with John Snowy. Um, we're a public health research and uh, consultant organization based here in Boston um, or in Massachusetts. Uh, we've been here for about 40 years. I, and I will say it's an absolute honor to be here. Uh, JSI and my work, and, and certainly Glenn, a lot of Glenn's work. Um, uh, is really about working with you and building the capacity of in individual organizations like all of you are represent. But even more than that, it's supporting collaboratives and coalitions like you are as a group. And um, I'm sure you all know this, but you are absolutely at the epicenter of so much of what is happening today uh, in, call it health reform, call it whatever you wish about how we're trying to transform uh, how we um, improve health, how we create health equity, how we address disparities. Um, you all in your region here uh, are the absolute key, and I appreciate that might feel like a daunting task. I know that Chelsea talked really passionately about the incredibly hard work that you all do and, and, the, and the, the vision versus the on the ground work, uh, but I cannot tell you um, how important it is that you're working together, working collaboratively. Um, the issues that you've identified today and talked about uh, are absolutely at the core. Um, and so I, I guess I just want to at least start out with a, um, a word of encouragement and, and um, hopefully some inspiration that you all are, are just um, absolutely key to this process. Um, JSI uh, is currently working with Health Alliance, Clinton Hospitals, and UMass Memorial on their community health needs assessment. Uh, Glenn Eaton uh, and his team with the uh, Massachusetts Regional Planning Commission is working with Haywood Hospital and Mary Gennetti. Um, we're working with Rosa Fernandez at, at uh, uh, Health Alliance, Clinton Hospital. And um, our initial findings are run from some quantitative data and some uh, interviews and focus groups completely align, and, and we're relatively early on in our stages here, but it completely aligns with the, the, the priority areas that you've identified. Uh, and so I hope that we can create some, some sort of synergy uh, and work a little, little bit together so that we can sort of confirm and prioritize some of the issues that you've ident identified in your groups, but also really think a little bit more forward about what should be done. How can we work collaboratively? Uh, what's currently working well in your communities to address these issues? And what is really in the forefront and perhaps um, uh, sort of rooted in the evidence and, um, and something that could really um, help you to collaborate and, and really address these issues together? It really has to be done in a collaborative way. There's no way that any one organization can address a lot of those really underlying issues that affect these, uh, that are, are really driving these health issues. So I really hope that together in our in some small groups that we're going to break out into, we can think about, you know, some confirming and prioritizing some of the issues that are really driving um, the challenges that you've identified, but also think forward about what should be done and how we can align efforts and, and work collaboratively. So, um, so I, um, I. We don't have a ton of time. Uh, I know we're, the agenda seems to be running a little bit behind, but I'd like to take um, uh, uh, break up into four groups. Um, uh, the disparities that are sort of rooted in those social determinants are really absolutely at the core. And so I'd like to, so certainly your transportation and access group um, is really aligned with that. And so I'd like to have one group in here in the left-hand corner in that round table to, look, to think about those issues, social determinants of health, transportation, housing, access, uh, and um, the disparities in social injustice that really are uh, sort of drive some of those issues. So that's one group. The second group over here in, in the back corner on the right, or my right, stage right, is around behavioral health and substance use, mental health and substance use. Um, so much of what we've heard in the past years really has to do with mental health and substance use really being at the core um, of uh, of health and health status uh, and well-being. So we'd like to have a group that talks about that issues over there. 
The third group is around risk factors, certainly um, fitness and nutrition, um, but the chronic conditions that really are the, the, the sequela, what sort of ha happens as a result of some of the uh, sort of poor nutrition and fitness nutrition, certainly the data um, dry, uh, sort of tells us that diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, um, uh, con congestive heart failure are really all um, major issues, but it's, it's really the risk factors that are, are, are often at the core of that. So we'd like to have um, the fitness, nutrition, and those interested or um, willing to share information on chronic disease uh, and, uh, and risk factors and have them here in the, in the front of the room on the right. And then finally, um, probably the you know, sort of after behavioral health and social determinants uh, ideas around trauma, domestic violence, uh, and healthy relationships has really run, rung out and, and come out of our groups. And so we'd like to have a group here that's focusing on trauma, um, domestic violence, and healthy relationships uh, here in this corner in the front. Um, so um, the three goals for these groups are to one, sort of confirm and prioritize what really are the driving issues uh, here, think about what's currently working well, the resources and, um, and programs that are um, that are currently happening, and then thinking about how we can work collaboratively to address these issues and what types of strategies um, uh, we might want to uh, sort of push forward. The hospitals are required, as the so the Chana Nine, um, to develop a community health improvement plan of their own, and I and I really absolutely um, pledge just to, to really try to develop one. It really needs to be one singular plan. So we'll really be working to try to align our efforts and think about things that we can do to address these issues. I think, but also because of the idea that you need to start early and address those segments of the population so that you can um, help them to thrive and move forward as healthy, uh, productive people. And so I think um, a lot of our, our discussion was um, around youth, um, uh, those effect, the children affected by uh, parents who uh, are in trauma themselves, uh, <coughs> Children affected by by partner violence amongst themselves, you know, between two people. Certainly, as you get older, that becomes even more traumatic and more prevalent. And so, um, the idea of doing education, identification, uh, and then moving into treatment was a major part of our discussion. We also talked about uh, trauma affecting um, LGBTQ, um, those coming from other countries who have experienced trauma. Um, uh, our refugees certainly being the more, you know, perhaps the most um, uh, clear cut. Um, uh, we talked a little bit about incarcerated folks coming out of prison and certainly the trauma uh, and the impacts of that population. Uh, we also talked about caregivers uh, and the fact that um, vicarious trauma from caregivers is also uh, a, a critical and important thing for us to consider. Um, I think uh, the closing comment, I think, is, a, is was a really nice one, which was the way I would close, is that I spent like a few minutes at the beginning explaining the whole breadth of trauma and healthy relationships, and you know I could have talked for another 15 minutes just even setting the stage, the 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 breadth of trauma that people experience, the impacts that that has, uh, is is just tremendous, uh, and so we do have to focus, uh, and um, uh, that would be our challenge, I think. So, I, how did I do, Madison? That was great, thanks. We're going to move on to the social determinants, health, the health equity, racial justice. <laughs> All right, so uh, we talked about, like I said, a lot of the health equity stuff. Um, so what we wanted to hit on was some of the things that weren't touched on. Uh, so a lot of people brought things, uh, education, you know, why the graduation rates a little bit lower than they should be, what could be the, you know, familiar, uh, the family reasons behind that, what could be their socioeconomic status, things of that nature. We also talked about transportation, how it's, e you know, easier for people in the closer city areas, but not in rural. 
Um, and then we went along to longitudinal systems for self-help and self-management, which was uh, a big issue, along also with uh, food access, prenatal care, populations, uh, people of those nature. Um, let's see. Also elders with PTSD who felt like they didn't actually have um, a place to call home, a place that they felt super welcoming at, and they wanted a place for, their, uh, for them to congregate, essentially. And we also talked about job training programs for people who, you know, in manufacturing and retail sectors, which are going down regionally. What are we doing to help those people transition their skills over into new jobs? And then on assets and strength, we talked about this employment and jobs program, which are limited in funding, but the biggest issue is outreach to the public. How can we get people to actually come in, or how can we meet people in more creative ways to help them? Um, we also talked about transportation assistance programs. Again, limited, but they're there. We just need to let people know that they're there. Um, and then also social media, uh, discussing Fitchburg, things of the, uh, that nature, information sharing, were some of the biggest things that came out. Great. So if we can move the mic to the back right and have somebody report out on the uh, behavioral health and substance use. Um, we did behavioral health, mental health, and um, substance abuse. So one of the main points is that there are many services and programs that are out there, but they're not all collaborating together. There's duplicate efforts going on, so the organization should come together more. Uh, there's also, it was also pointed out that there's cultural aspects of this, where, you know, if, if you're a, I was told not to say minority group, um, if you're a group that is um, not in the majority, um, that there needs to be people in these services that can address these cultural issues and be able to talk to the people the way they need to be talked to. So that was, um, those are some of the major issues that we had in this group. I don't know if I need a microphone, but I'll follow the pattern. So I'm, uh, my name's Glenn, and I'll just hit on two issues. The uh, farmer's market using uh, uh, SNAP benefits for folks that have SNAP and SNAP eligible. Uh, seems to be a lot of training to get people connected with SNAP to uh, farmer's markets, but there the was a wonderful uh, Group A uh, discussion on that issue as it connects also to the complete streets issue and also uh, Tom for Fitchburg just mentioned. A uh, fascinating issue related to farmer's market, it's at the Upper Common, but a safety issue getting to the Upper Common and making sure that when you get your zucchini, it's a safe walk across across the street. Uh, group B also discussed, uh, and I was disgusted to hear that in the tobacco cessation, yes, we need more programming, it needs to be at more facilities, hospitals, uh, health centers, and so on. But I guess now the tobacco industry, and I don't have kids, so I learned these things when I come to uh, listen to you good people. That uh, So I guess, you know, the vaping industry, and now there are vaping products for the kids, for the middle schoolers to use, and they look like flash drives. And they go into the, so they, I guess they go into the, to the bathrooms and use them, and the, the teachers may or may not know. So that was uh, pretty important to hear and very sad. But it was a great, great discussion, and uh, I would yield the mic. Great. Glenn, an MRPC, and Mary Janetti and Haywood Hospital, as well as JSI and um, Rosa Fernandez and Health Alliance and Clinton Hospitals. I really want to thank you, Kelsey, for giving us this time. I hope this is, you found at least a chance for you to to talk about some of your own issues. It's also been incredibly informative for us. And I, um, I really hope that we can align what we're doing across the region and think about these really incredibly important issues and work together. It's really all about collaboration and, and leveraging all of what we do on behalf of, of those in need in your community and increasing health status. So I applaud you all for all of what you do. And again, thank you so much for, for giving us this time. I hope it's been helpful for you as well. So that is what we're going to do next with the Community Partner Awards. Um, I would like to take just a second to um, encourage everyone here um, within their organizations to think about the CHIP, to think about um, systems change and advancing things within their own organizations. Um, pledging as an organization to pay a living wage. 
uh, don't require excessive, unnecessary levels of education or make unnecessary. Decisions. With his vision and leadership, the Three Pyramids in collaboration with the Reimagined North of Maine project has developed the Financial Inclusion Project. This project is intended to address economic inequality for people of color by creating financial literacy education to residents of Fitchburg, which will help put them on the path to financial independence. I can't think of another organization more deserving of this award. So it's with great honor that I'll present Irene Hernandez on behalf of the Three Pyramids with the Racial Justice Partnership Award. On behalf of um, Three Pyramids Minority Coalition, thank you so much, um, Eladia, for highlighting um, the work that Adrian Ford has done in our community. I think for many of us, we hear Adrian Ford, but we don't know. We don't know because either we don't care or, or we just don't educate ourselves because it doesn't matter to some of us. Um, thank you so much um, because he's, he's worked so hard. Um, the, the time I've known Adrian Ford, he has just worked and worked without being compensated for the legacy that he has brought here to our area. And I get emotional because this man works tirelessly, tirelessly, tirelessly to fight the fight Every day we get up as people of color, as people of different color hues, whatever you want to call us, we have to wake up to fight every day. We get into our cars, we go to work, we, we meet with, with, with our, our professional staff at the different places that we work, and we have to fight with administration to be respected, to be effective or efficient enough, to have research when we say anything, because we're always found to be suspicious. So when I talk about Adrian Ford, I'm so happy. I call him Uncle Adrian. Why? Because he's mentored me since I was 11 years old. With his afro, now he doesn't have hair. <laughs> Maybe because of me, right? <laughs> um, but you know, on behalf of Three Pyramids, and on behalf of, of the city of Fitchburg and North Central, we're here to do work. We're here to, to move mountains. We're here to speak and say move, and it will move. And we're here to invite each and every one of you to have conversations with us. We're not scary. We're not here to hurt you. We're not here to fight you, to rob you. We're not here to kill you. We're here as your brothers and sisters. See us, affirm us, just as if we were your true biological brother and sister. So I thank you for this honor and that we continue to work in these efforts. share your time when you're um, a, a local nonprofit with a small staff. Um, it's not easy to make time to be part of these working groups. Um, so I truly appreciate, um, and they, they are aptly named, you guys are working so hard. Um, so thank you. One home.